Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be simplifying a radical expression. First of all, allow me to say that x is greater than or equal to 1. Because for our radical to be well defined, we do need that condition. So under those conditions, we're going to simplify this radical. And then we're going to find the value, which is true for, you know, certain values of x. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a graph that verifies this finding. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to do the following. I want to be able to square root this. So this must be the square of something, don't you think? But as is, it doesn't look like a perfect square. So let's make it perfect. How? By observing the following. This is x minus 1. This is x. So I'm kind of missing the 1 there. So let's go ahead and minus 1 here. And then, of course, you can't just subtract 1, right? You have to add it. And guess what? This gives us a perfect square. And that's perfect. Why? Because this is square root of x minus 1 squared. This is 1 squared. And this is 2ab. So I, I, I kind of got this pattern. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And as you know, this is a plus b quantity squared. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this then. So I got square root of square root of x minus 1 plus 1 squared. How do you square root something squared? Okay, in other words, what is square root of a squared? And some of you might say, hey, this is a, we already know that. But what about if you have the square root of negative 3 squared? Is that equal to negative 3? No, because real numbers only have a single square root, and that is the positive one. Unless you put a minus sign in front of it, right? So we're going to go with the positive. But notice that square root of x minus 1 cannot be negative. If you add 1 to it, it has to be positive. Therefore, this is already positive, so I don't need... By the way, I didn't say what this was. This is the absolute value of a. Come on, you already know this, right? So this is already positive, so I'm just going to write it as square root of x minus 1 plus 1, and that is going to be our answer. Okay, and let's see what the graph tells us. Remember, when we were square rooting the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x minus 1, we found this result. So instead of graphing them separately because eh, it didn't really work well, I decided to look at their difference. And what does this mean? Their difference is 0 because they're equal, right? So these two expressions are equal as long as x is greater than or equal to 1. And... This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.